Well, hello everybody and uh, welcome to our sixth form virtual open evening. My name is Alan Watkins, Headmaster of Victoria College. Let me begin by saying that I do understand that entering the sixth form is a really exciting part of education. Indeed, your choice of A-levels allows you to explore in really greater depth those subjects that you're passionate about. But it's a bit more than that because the choice of subjects will ultimately determine your career path. Now at Victoria College, you can expect to be taught by subject specialists in a really supportive, intellectually stimulating environment. And we also provide you with many out of class experiences and activities. But your emotional and your social development is also important to us and we have a very strong pastoral support network in place to promote this. Now our school is academically successful and we take great pride in the results of our students. So only last summer, Victoria College students celebrated some of the most outstanding results in the history of the school, particularly at the top end. So as a sixth former, you will have more freedom than you've had in previous years and that comes with greater responsibility. Mastering independent learning will therefore be key to your success at A level. And in turn, we will naturally expect you to exercise greater responsibility in terms of your study and your school life, especially as years 12 and 13 represent an important transition time as you move towards university and employment. Now, six formers set the standard for the school and you will be seen as really prominent role models by the younger boys in the school. Indeed, years 12 and 13 are parts of the school where we really develop our peer leadership network. And traditional prefect roles are available, but alongside a really diverse array of other leadership opportunities. So I wanted to say that whatever your interests, we will help you develop personally, on the extracurricular front, and of course, academically. The sixth form at Victoria College is where our pupils develop into young men. Confident, well-rounded individuals with inquiring minds and a lifelong love of learning. So if this is you, then come and join our sixth form. Victoria College offers you a truly enhanced experience where you are encouraged and supported to take up all learning and leadership opportunities that we have to offer. If you are prepared to do this, you will gather great experiences. You will find important friendships and ultimately build a really successful future.
Well, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Gareth Hughes. I'm the deputy headmaster here at Victoria College. Uh, many of you watching uh, will, will know me. You'll have seen me around the school. Uh, but for those of us joining from other schools, uh, an enormous welcome to you. You are most welcome to this uh, this evening. Now, I hope that the, uh, the presentation, uh, sorry, the video that you've just seen, albeit maybe a little judgy, uh, apologies for that, gives you a little bit of a flavour as to the sort of experience that Victoria College uh, can offer. But remember that the sixth form is very much the pinnacle of our educational experience here. And so some of the things that you've seen there uh, will be available, but so, so much more as well. So I'm going to talk very briefly today, um, before you hear from our boys, um, about value. Now, um, first of all, I'd like to talk about what we do in terms of adding value. Um, at Victoria College, our goal is to add value to uh, uh, your son's educational experience here. So that will be through, for example, academic attainment. Our boys will, by and large, overachieve against uh, their expectations. You know, we add value to their results and their attainment. Uh, in terms of career opportunities, we have incredible links with the old Victorian uh, community, uh, local businesses and so on. So we provide a huge amount of added value in terms of advice and experience um, for uh, your sons uh, as they move through uh, the sixth form and beyond. We add value in terms of sports and co-curricular opportunities. You'll hear a lot about those uh, in the next uh, few minutes from some of our boys. Uh, our outstanding facilities, um, our diverse range of uh, clubs, activities uh, and sports teams. If you're interested in it, chances are we provide it. And of course, through skill development. And this is something that I, um, I, I feel hugely proud of, how well our boys develop in terms of their leadership, their altruism, their working with others. And I must say that the relationship that I certainly uh, enjoy with some of our sixth formers is fantastic. They are fantastic individuals. Um, and actually the relationship between uh, teachers and students when you get to the sixth form is that much more adult, that much more um, uh, sort of mature. And uh, we really treat them almost as, uh, as partners in education here at the top of our school. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about our college values. Now, for those of you who are already in the school, you will know these. It's what we talk about a lot. But for those that are joining us um, for the first time, uh, this is something new for you. Um, we have four college values and we value what we value. So our um, values of respect, resilience, resourcefulness and aspiration. Everything we do at Victoria College and particularly in our sixth form is about trying to bring those character traits on because we feel that if our young men in the sixth form display those character traits, they will become interested and interesting young men. They will have drive and determination and they will make a huge impact and difference in the world once they leave us uh, as fantastic young men in their communities. So uh, finally, I'd like to say we are a, sta uh, a state's fee paying school, but I fervently believe that we offer incredible value for money um, from what we uh, provide in terms of that value. So uh, to give you a little bit more of a sense of what we do, it's probably best for the boys to be speaking to you. So I'm gonna hand you over now to, uh, to some of our fantastic sixth formers who are gonna tell you a little bit more about what life is like actually on the ground here in terms of the sixth form timetable. Over to them. Uh, ben, Ben Umar, thank you all very much for joining me. We're gonna be talking about the timetable in the sixth form. Um, so. Ben Wiseman, over to you first of all. What, what does the shape of the day look like at Victoria College? Um, so your day starts at 8.25 um, in the morning um, and it runs all the way through till 3.25 in the afternoon. Um, the day consists of five hour long periods and then you also have morning registration at 8.25 um, and then you have break time between periods two and three, lunchtime between four and five and then uh, just straight after lunchtime you've got a registration period in the afternoon where you'll get things like assemblies or um, some forms of enrichment sometimes. Brilliant. And in those five one hour sessions, what, what would that look like for sick former? So each one of those uh, one hour long sessions will either be one of your uh, lessons. So you have one hour lessons, one one hour lesson for each of your subjects per day. Uh, and then alternatively, it could be either an enrichment. So you have optional enrichment uh, or it could be uh, an independent study session. And what are you doing for your enrichment slot this year? Uh, my enrichment uh, is uh, finance um, it's just sort of it's a course uh, it's rec it's recognized by all of the um, the bodies that do finance here in Jersey and it's like an introduction to the finance industry brilliant thank you very much and Friday afternoon of course the sixth form games um, yeah. why don't you tell me about that um, it's a really good uh, opportunity I think uh, it's a fun uh, time to unwind uh, it's really good because you get uh, obviously the whole book uh, people are sick from there um, and you just get this sort of really chill games period five brilliant and also alongside that of course we have the CCF 
um, and we'll have Tom Mulholland talking to us about that later on today. Um, ben Philip, over to you then. Um, what, how does that differ a little bit in year 12? So talk to me about the additional things that you'll be doing in year 12. So in year 12, uh, you get careers, so you get an hour of careers a week uh, with Miss Job and uh, you learn about stuff like making a CV, a career, um, a cover email and uh, interviews, uh, mock interviews with people uh, from businesses around Jersey. You'll also get a mandatory enrichment lesson once a week. Um, and it's, it's very similar, but a few minor differences. And, and what, what sorts of things you've been covering in the mandatory enrichment sessions? That's a lecture, isn't it? Once a week, you receive a lecture. Um, what sorts of things have you been covering in that? So you'll get uh, university-style lectures, whether from senior teachers uh, or you'll get speeches from, out, from speakers from outside of school, stuff like mental health or uh, even physical health. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, and what have you selected for your other enrichment offer? So for my enrichment, I've got Lambda Public Speaking, uh, just speaking in public. Good. And that will come out with a formal qualification at the end. Uh, and Ben, you study one of your subjects at JCG Media. Um, how have you found that? So obviously we've got a number of subjects that students can study at our consortium school. So we work closely with JCG, Bolia and DLSL. Um, how have you found it working with uh, students at JCG and going across the road for those subjects? So it's an incredibly smooth process, uh, incredibly smooth process even. Um, even from the first week, we'll be told where to go. And then it's very simple. It's very similar to how it is at Vic, just in a different place. Uh, working with the girls again very easy and uh, you'll feel like a normal class brilliant um, and another offer in year 12 is the EPQ the extended project qualification um, Uma why don't you tell me a little bit about what that involves um, sort of the the process you go through and what you've gained from that of course uh, so uh, the extended project qualification is an independent research task and involves you either writing a extended essay of about 5,000 words or creating a product with an accompanying shorter essay of around a thousand words. Most students in the sixth form, as well as myself, chose option one, which is normally the most popular by far. And that also included a spoken verbal presentation, as well as a written logbook of the process that you go about when creating the project. So for me personally, it was a great addition to my existing curriculum and fell under my enrichment lessons in year 12, which Ben just touched on. And it requires a lot of independent work or research by myself, both inside and outside of school hours, which was something that a lot of children aren't necessarily used to. And it's a great change to normal classwork. However, once a week, you do have a group session or a one to one with the other EPQ students and Miss Varney, who is the coordinator for the projects. And during those sessions, you learn a whole load of really important skills that will help you beyond school life, such as footnoting and sort of verbal presentation skills and also things such as how to present your arguments effectively in your essay. Um, for me as you are sir I feel it was really helpful because A um, and to other students you get UCAS points for doing an EPQ it's also something that a lot of the top universities like to see if you choose sort of a subject that is of interest to your chosen topic so mine was about economics finance and also had a bit of politics in there so it looked really good on the statement and it can also provide just a talking point if any of your universities require an interview so it was something that was really useful for me I put it on my statement wrote a whole paragraph about it and it was a great experience because I, I could become a specialist in a really sort of distinct area of economics that was of really good interest to myself and if it comes up in my interview you know it's something that's really specific that I have loads of good knowledge about that I can show to my interviewer so it was something that I really enjoyed and it was really worth it for me and it just adds up as a, it counts as an AS qualification. So you do actually get an official sort of qualification and recognition for it from the exam board, which is really good as well. Great. Thank you very much. Um, and Ben and Uma, you are two of our prefects. Ben, you're obviously our head boy. Um, Uma, you are our, our Dunlop house captain, head of house. Um, so how do you, I'll go to Ben first, how do you use your spare time, so study periods and lunch times, to balance that workload? Um, well, it's quite important to use my study periods effectively. So obviously, if I've got um, things after school or before school, which are trying to drag my time away, I need to make sure I've got my homework and things done, um, all my study I need to get done, revision and things along those lines. Um, it's also good with the, the, the independent um, study periods because um, I can use those to do prefect duties. So say um, we've got um, something in school we did recently, uh, we went and sorted out the archives down in the temple. Um, we went and used the one of the study periods that all of the prefects had and we just basically lifted and shifted a load of um, material from the archive that was being um, threatened by the dam. So um, they, they give us a good good window of opportunity within the day 
um, when obviously we'd be busy doing other studies, if not. Um, and how about you, Umar? How have you managed to balance the workload with your schoolwork alongside your additional leadership role? Yeah, so the free periods or study periods that we get in our sixth form timetable have been really critical in helping me manage my sort of extra responsibilities. So normally I use them to get a lot of my homework out of the way or sort of any extra notes that I need to make. And once I've got that all boxed off, I use sort of after school mainly to make sure that all the house teams are organized to go and watch any of the house events. And if I have managed to get all my homework done, then the free periods give me some nice time to just go and check on all, all my other form members and just to make sure that everything in the house is running smoothly. So they've been really important for me this year, just to make sure that I stay on top of things. But I've had to make sure that I use the time effectively. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Ben, Ben, Uma, thank you very much for your time. Please leave that uh, well alone. So um, with that in mind, I'd just like to say I am absolutely delighted that we've got uh, 103 families in here tonight. It is absolutely brilliant. And um, you have heard a little bit there from uh, our greatest asset, our boys. Um, they are, actually have displayed a huge amount of resilience and resourcefulness over the last few weeks. And as you can see, um, we have had to um, put this, uh, this video together, actually in some cases uh, from the boys working from home. Um, and so passionate are they about their experience at Victoria College that they were very, very keen to work with us um, remotely. So that's the kind of uh, commitment to the cause and that's the kind of character traits, uh, character traits that we are seeking to develop. So uh, one of the reasons that uh, many boys choose to study here uh, at Victoria College and move into the sixth form is about the other opportunities beyond the curriculum. So I'm now going to hand over to uh, some more of our boys uh, who are going to talk you through uh, a range of aspects from sport, art, CCF, leadership and student voice. Thanks. Ben, Robbie, Tom, Josh, Archie, thank you very much for joining me for this. Um, really, I want to talk to you about uh, the opportunities within sixth form. Um, so each of you are involved in different aspects of what the sixth form has to offer. Um, so Ben, starting with you, please. Um, you are our student voice prefect. Um, so could you just tell me what that involves and why you believe student voice is such an important part of sixth form life? Well, as the student voice prefect for the school, I help organise both the school council meetings and the student action group meetings. And um, I think these groups are very important for both the sixth form and the school as a whole, because it gives everybody a chance to voice their opinions on what needs changing in the school and within the wider community. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And, and how often do, um, do those meetings take place? Uh, we, have, we try and have them as often as possible. At the moment, it's difficult because of COVID. So um, we split them up into lower school and upper school meetings. And... Uh, these tend to happen at least a couple of times every half term, but we're pushing to have them more often. And uh, last question for you, how would students get involved in that if they wanted to? Well, uh, students can get involved in this by uh, going to speak to Miss Fowler or myself uh, with regards to student council, because we're trying to get as, as many people involved as possible. And um, usually there's one person who's nominated per form time. So uh, you can speak to your form teacher about that too. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, Josh, you're our art prefect, um, so that looks after art, drama and music. Uh, same question to you really, could you talk to me about what uh, is available for students within the sixth form in those areas? Of course, so in a typical sixth form year there are lots of various opportunities uh, in the arts departments, uh, so starting with house events, we've got house art, house drama and house music. Um, so you, I'm sure most of you already participated in these but in the sixth form, you have more of a, an organisational role where you can take um, more responsibility uh, in, in organising the different events. Uh, there's also a school production uh, every year, in a usual year, um, and you can either, whether that be uh, performing or you can also be part of the tech support or the stage support. Um, so anyone can really be involved. That's quite similar to the uh, choir, the Voce Victoria, which is a more senior choir so it will be predominantly sixth form and the sixth form band that's just been recently started it, they're relatively accessible uh, anyone can can try and sing so so yeah it, anyone can really get involved and what's different in the sixth form to music in different years is that you can captain um, a band or like a concert band one of the sixth form bands so you can get a bit of leadership from that and you can also help with year sevens uh, every Tuesday to help teach an instrument just for half an hour a week, which is, is a good way of giving back to the school through the arts. Brilliant. 
Thank you very much. Um, Tom, you are our most senior student cadet in the CCF. So do you want to tell us more about your role and also uh, about opportunities within the sick form for the CCF? Yeah, no problem. So my role is basically to liaise uh, and organise the training of all the cadets in the CCF, um, running right the way from year nine all the way up to the sixth form. Um, and, and it's kind of liaising between the staff and the cadets and, and organising what they do and when they do it. Um, really kind of what, what's good about it is, is that any one of, of kind of our kind of year 11 students or, or students coming in from different schools can, can join the CCF. Um, and if you're already in it, you'll know what it's like to be in it um, and, and how that differs really kind of going from year 11 to, to the sixth form is you take on that, that leadership role that you may not have been given the chance to do. Um, and and you, you're kind of thrown into it, maybe at the deep end, but that's kind of how you, how you learn. You kind of learn on the job. So you'll, get, you'll, you'll be given plenty of opportunities and it will start off quite small, specific opportunities. Um, and you, you kind of assess how you do in that in those scenarios and then that kind of moves on and, and up really and and you know eventually you could get to to where I am today or, or there's, there's many other specific roles within the CCF that you can really specialize in um, and it's really important to note that if you are if you're not a Vic at the moment um, you can still join the CCF and, and that is something we're really looking at trying to get you in um, everyone can, can really add to it um, so yeah it's, it's, it's a really great opportunity in terms of leadership and, and practicing it outside of, of, of school. Um, you, you practice it in the CCF, but then also it's, you've got loads of transferable skills. So, for example, we're going to hear about peer mentoring. We've heard about sports and, and arts and stuff. So these leadership roles, um, they're all very transferable. Um, Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, Robbie, that leads into you then. So why don't you tell us about your role as sports prefect? So what does that involve? Uh, but yeah. also, how does sport change once students join the sixth form? Yeah, yeah. So um, similar to what Tom was saying, um, there's loads of opportunities throughout the sixth form. Um, so main sports are no no change to uh, to the lower schools. So obviously, um, football, cricket, hockey, and rugby are kind of kind of the main four game sports, um, dependent on which term. Um, so opportunities wise, there's obviously. Uh, different tours going on so for for football there's the there's one tour there's the main one too usually it's to London last couple of years they've run it have been to London they've trained with um Chelsea and Tottenham teams like that uh, and then there's there's hockey which kind of they go a bit more more Europe based every other year which is which is quite good they go to uh, Barcelona Amsterdam um, and then there's <clears throat> Then there's cricket, obviously, uh, which have the Castle Festival, which is a really good, really good opportunity for uh, for the first eleven to to try and retain that at the moment, which is which is good against other other English schools. Um, and then, yeah, as as, uh, as Josh was saying, there's the the house events, um, which most people know about. There's uh, there's Blomfield, uh, which at senior level it's worth worth double points down down at the junior school. Um, and then oh, no, probably sorry to interrupt so for those that aren't part of the victoria college community yet um what is the blomfield uh, and how can people get involved in that yeah so um the blomfield blomfield's great uh it's essentially just the house system of the sports uh so every every sport has a has a has a house event as well which so there's house football house cricket house rugby um and you compete against your mates, compete against other houses and um, and try and win. And there's obviously the overall trophy, which is the Blomfield Trophy, uh, currently held by Damid, I think, um, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but then, as, as I was saying, um, there's our sister school, which is Elizabeth College, uh, which we play against them in, in most sports. Cricket, play against them twice a year, football against them twice a year in the CR League. Um, and that's that's kind of a good rivalry we've got got going at the moment, which is good. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, Archie, over to you. Um, you are oh, one of our Year 12 peer mentors. Uh, I just want you to talk to us, please, about what that involves. So what sort of training have you received? Um, what does peer <coughs> mentoring involve? And what have you gained from that? So peer mentoring is basically a scheme in the school to build a culture of trust and uh, togetherness between the younger and the older years in the school. Uh, it's basically an opportunity for younger members in the school to approach people who might be more they might be more comfortable with as obviously they understand that they've gone through that stage themselves 
um, is good because it can help to develop conversation skills. So for the year 12s, etc., uh, develops a bit of maturity as well. Helps you to understand that, oh, I'm one of the older members of the school now and I need to take that responsibility. And also helps you to develop empathy. So it makes you understand how they feel and you can relate and you can provide your experience to them and show them that you've been through that too. So it's just very helpful and it's just quite important for the school, I think. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Archie. Boys, thank you all very much for that. Um, really useful to get a student's perspective of just some of the opportunities available at sixth form level. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Great to see some of our students talking about their experience at Victoria College there. Uh, and I know some of them are watching tonight with their younger siblings, so thank you very much to you boys for taking part in that. At Victoria College, we provide tailored support for each of our students. Whether you're aiming for A stars or C grades, university or employment, we'll provide you with all the support you need to be successful. You'll see your tutor twice a day. Uh, they'll help to overcome any barriers you might face as sixth form time progresses. Uh, that will culminate in then your applications to either university or the workplace, which they will support you with to create your personal statement and your reference. You then have the sixth form team, uh, which is Mrs. Joe, who oversees our careers program, Ms. Varney, who oversees our university application process and our higher learning potential program, and uh, myself, I oversee academic intervention and pastoral support. Academic support is, is really relative to the individual. So, as I said before, whether you're aiming for A stars or C grades, um, we'll support you in trying to achieve your potential. Uh, and as Dr. Hugh said at the start, that, that potential is limitless. Okay, we will support you in achieving that next step, wherever you may be on that journey. In addition to those already mentioned, uh, we have Mrs. Priestley and Mrs. Watkins, uh, who look after our student support uh, program down at the study centre. Uh, and of course, uh, a whole raft of support for those with uh, wellbeing issues, such as a school counsellor. We also aim to maintain regular contact with parents, whether that be through um, celebrating success or perhaps getting you involved in action plans where students aren't quite achieving their potential yet. You're about to hear from Sammy and George, two of our Year 13 students, and they're going to talk to you about our UCAS programme, um, the support that's been offered to them, the processes involved, uh, and the role of Miss Barney. Over to them. Um, okay, George, Sammy, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I just really wanted to talk to you about the UCAS process. Uh, so applying for university and all that that involves, really. So, uh, Sammy, can I start with you? I just want you to talk to us, please, about how the process starts. So when did it start? What does that involve? Um, and who helps you in getting set up? So in the summer term of year 12, uh, the process of UCAS application starts. So we had a meeting with the head of sixth form, Mr. For yourself, to set us up on UCAS to make sure we're all set up for the relevant information we needed to get started. We then were also set up on UCAS and UniFrog throughout the year with the help of Miss Jo, who's the head of careers. And then in the summer of year 12, you look at what you're studying and what you might want to study further um, at university. And then you go out and undertake the relevant research so that you can look into courses that might interest you. Brilliant. And, and sorry, Sammy, what, what is UniFrog? Can you describe it for me? So UniFrog is a website which is used by us at Victoria College. So it's a place where you can start drafting your personal statements, which is really useful for Miss Varney, who's very helpful during the process, to look at the statement as it goes along, to make comments so that you can go back and look over it to make sure you're on the right track. Okay, and George, Sammy touched upon this, but um, Miss Varney is our head of UCAS. She oversees the whole process. Um, so can you just sort of describe her role, what she does, and also describe the role of your tutor in the UCAS process? Okay, so um, Miss Varney, she oversees the whole UCAS process for every student at the school. So she will help you from the beginning of your personal statement to sending off your application right at the end. She's amazing at what she does. If you have any university related question and ask her, she'll either give you an answer there or find out the answer to give it to you later on. She is um, very supportive and at one stage will go through um, every single student's personal statement line by line to make sure you're putting the right things down and she knows what's going to get you into university so she'll help you in that way. Uh, she'll also help you make decisions about uh, which university you might want to go to based on your interests if, you get, if you're a bit stuck with that. Um, and she's very motivational in getting things done because uh, she's got like, a whole year group to get on with so uh, pushes you along a bit. Moving on to the, uh, the tutors, uh, my tutor is Miss Adams, uh, an English teacher. She's been uh, very supportive in the process from having a short interview with me to see what kind of things I'm interested in so she could help write, she could, that helps her start the uh, reference she writes about me, um, which she then 
gets information from other subject teachers of mine together uh, and that would be the teacher reference that gets sent off to university. Miss Varney would also have something to do with that. Um, other than that, uh, she's just been generally helpful in uh, getting things ready to go. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, and obviously, we're now in a position where UCAS application has been sent off. So we, we've passed our internal deadline. Both of you guys have got your application sent away. So Sammy, what, what changed when you came back in year 13? What do you have to do to really get that UCAS application finished? So at the end of year 12, I started to narrow down the choices from which universities I was looking to attend at the end of sixth form. The thing that really ramped up for me would be the personal statement. Um, so that became really relevant. Um, so it was making sure that I had a draft ready to send. Well, firstly, I approached, as George said, my form tutor to see what she thought, any comments she had. And then I made some amendments on Unifrog and then made appointments um, weekly with Miss Varney to make sure that my statement was up to scratch and was adequate with the information needed. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and this question for both of you, maybe starting with George, what have you done outside of the classroom? So other than your, your A-level programme, what have you done to enhance your application? Well, uh, that's a good question because uh, what we do in A-levels is um, obviously good and enriching for our education, but it's so much more if you can do anything beyond that to enhance your personal statement and boost your application to uh, keep you up on the competitive playing field of university places. So, uh, so what I've done is a lot of further reading into subjects I'm both interested in and related to the course that I've applied for. Um, further, further to that, I've tried to attend uh, some online lectures and uh, online events. And in year 12, I actually attended some actual events before COVID hit us. But a lot of these events are going online now, which is quite good for enhancing understanding in different subject matters. Another thing you can undertake on the uh, links to this on the UniFrog website, which we sign up to, is uh, something called a MOOC, which is a massive online open course. I did one of these in uh, US government and politics to enhance my understanding of that. Brilliant. Thank you very much. What about you, Sammy? So I'm looking to do French and Spanish. So during my time in year 12 and 13, I kept up to date regularly with the news in both France and Spain. And furthermore, I take drama as my third A level. And one of the plays we studied was originally written in Spanish. Um, we obviously study in English, but I took my time to read the play in Spanish as well just for some further reading and reading and understanding um, of the Spanish language. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, and one final question, maybe directed towards you, George. Um, Miss Viney works with a group of students who we call our early applicants. Can you just describe what that is and, and what that process involves? Okay, so um, people applying to uh, more competitive courses at places such as uh, Oxford or Cambridge, and that this, this group also includes uh, people that want to go and do medical courses or law courses and a few others. Um, she gets everyone, Miss Varney gets everyone together in about January, February time of year 12 for a, uh, a lunchtime meeting uh, in her classroom to discuss how the process will work from there. And she is very supportive in this group and helps us leading us through year 12 into year 13. Now, part of this sort of additional course, you could call it, uh, involves us all getting, uh, preparing a presentation on a topic that we're interested in, which was uh, quite exciting to do and then we present that presentation uh, to the rest of the group and uh, the rest of the group then quiz us on it and question us as though it was a interview um, which then leads on quite nicely to practice interviews which Miss Varney helps organise for this group because these courses tend to involve interviews. Another key part of this group is that our applications need to be in by the 15th of October which is a few months before uh, everyone else's application meaning that there's a tiny bit more pressure to get things done quickly, but this group helps uh, make that go quite smoothly. Brilliant. Boys, thank you both very, very much. Uh, that's really useful for our prospective students to hear about that process. Thank you for your time. Thank you, George and Sammy, for taking the time to record that with me last week whilst they were actually isolating at home. In recent years, we've tried to work closely with the 11-16 schools to increase the number of students joining us from those schools. Um, we're trying to increase the awareness of the opportunities available here at Victoria College. This year we're thrilled to welcome 13 students from other schools on Ireland and off Ireland um, and we're about to hear from three of those boys now. So Marley, Nikki and James are going to talk to you about their um, experience in joining Victoria College from other schools and they joined us from the Kennebe, the Rockia and Tolia. Okay, uh, James, Nikki, Marley, thank you very much for joining us. You're here to talk to us about the fact that you joined the sick from, from other schools. Um, so what I want to do is just go through a few questions that might help 
other students who aren't currently part of the Victoria College community to understand uh, how they might be able to join us. So, um, James, if I can come to you first, please. Can I ask why you applied to the sixth form of Vic College? Uh, yeah, I applied to sixth form of Victoria College as I had previously been at the school. And after leaving uh, in year 10, I decided that the school I moved to wasn't the right fit for me and that I was better suited to Victoria College's learning environment. Thank you very much. And what about you, Nikki? What made you apply to Victoria College? Uh, I, I applied to Victoria College in year seven, but unfortunately I didn't get in. And with my persistence and resilience, I didn't give up. So I tried my luck again at the end of my GCSEs, which I did well enough in to get into Victoria College. And what was it that drew, drew you to the college? Why did you want to join us? I just felt like that was the right environment to me to, for me to study in. I like the fact that you get to wear a uniform, it's not enclosed because it's more, it relates more to your future life that when you'll be working, you'll have a uniform, there will be, it will be like a lot more like it than compared to other, second, uh, other colleges. So, Nikki, whilst we're with you, um, how have you found the transition to Victoria College, both in terms of it being a new school, but also the A-level subjects and how that's different to GCSE? Um, in terms of the school, I find it, um, the environment very, very good and a lot easier to learn. And within the subjects, I think it's really good. And the fact that you get to study four or three subjects is a lot better, in my opinion, than studying eight or six different subjects. It's a lot easier to focus. And you changed subjects at the start, didn't you? You started with some subjects and then changed um, after the first couple of weeks. What sort of support was made available to you to make that change? Well, all the teachers were very supportive and no one had a grudge against me for changing subjects, which I was really happy with. And um, uh, uh, the support from the teachers was very good and better than I expected, to be honest, because they uh, encouraged me at the start and said to pick wisely and then I looked through every subject and picked the one that I was most interested in. Brilliant, good, okay. Um, and same question to you then, Marley, I guess. How have you found the transition to Victoria College? Uh, I found it quite sort of easy and it was quite a smooth transition because I felt all, all the teachers and staff were very helpful with the movement of school, especially with coronavirus and so on. And what about the step up from GCSEs? What, what have you noticed being the biggest differences from GCSE to A-level? Uh, I thought the workload is uh, like has increased uh, quite a bit and each subject goes into a lot more detail than you would have done previously. And how have you been able to manage that in terms of the increased workload? I feel the free lessons you're given do help because it helps sort of divide your day a bit more and you have to sort of do more work at school and rather than at home. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, and James, this sort of links into the question I was about to... Um, ask you really um, what are first of all the biggest differences that you've noticed but also um, the things that you found maybe hardest um, well the biggest differences for me would be that at a level you have time out of lessons uh, study periods which are incredibly helpful for getting ahead in class or catching up on missed work and doing homework which enables you to have more free time out of school uh, the biggest differences I'd say is just you have a lot more work to do than you would for each subject in GCSE so you have to kind of manage your uh, time well so you can stay on top of it all. And that then, Nikki, similar question to you. What, what have you found, has there been anything you found challenging about moving to Victoria College or starting your A-levels at all? Well, of course, as Marley touched on, you get a lot more work and the work's in a lot more detail. So you just have to, I guess, study a lot more within the subject. So that's probably the hardest part that I've found. But with the all with all the support given by the teachers, it's not really that hard at the end of the day. Brilliant, it's good to hear. Um, next question then, what have you enjoyed the most? And I, I guess actually we could come to all three of you for this. So should we go with you, James, first? What, what have you enjoyed most about Victoria College? For me, it's just the sports. Really. I've loved getting involved in all the sports that we have on offer and like uh, getting involved with the school teams and also the house football, which has been going on recently. And, and Nicky, uh, sorry, sorry, James, go on. It's all right. Um, Everyone has a great time. It's always a good laugh and it's never too serious. Good. And what about you, Nikki? What have you enjoyed the most about Victoria College? I like how everyone just works as a community. No one works as an individual. It's all very close together and everyone supports everyone. And what about you, Marley? Uh, basically, all the extra sort of activities and extracurricular activities offered. So like every Friday, 
period five, I play football with some of the other members of a sixth form, which is like some at the highlight of their week. It sort of just makes a difference to doing subject lessons uh, every day. Yeah, so it's those things outside the classroom, isn't it? That can make... um, and the final question then, uh, I think specifically to Nikki and Marley, as you guys have come from La Rocchia and Le Canave, um respectively, whereas James, obviously you've been with us previously. Uh, what sort of advice would you give somebody who's considering applying to Victoria College? So Nikki, to you first. I'd say um, don't judge a book by its cover. So a lot of the people think uh, Victoria College is just for like the rich and incredibly intelligent. And it's really not. It's for normal people. Like I'm a normal person myself, as are all the others in my sick form. And it's, it looks like Hogwarts from the outside, but that's just not true. I went there the first day and I saw every, there's like a museum inside and it's really cool how the school has its own history and foundation in Jersey. And I just think that a lot more people should apply from different schools and actually get to know how, what it is and how it is. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And what about you, Marley? Uh, yeah, so I agree with what Nikki said. It's like, don't rule out anything, sort of look into everything and don't dismiss it too easily without properly understanding it and sort of talk to everyone like yourself sir and everyone else at the school to just get a real, real grasp of what happens on a day-to-day basis sir. Yeah and you guys got the chance to come in for a taster didn't you which which I think helped and we might not be able to do quite the same this year but we'd certainly be willing to um, maybe get people in for a tour and perhaps we could get you guys to talk to any prospective students of that as well. Brilliant thank you very much gents thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you Hi everybody, um, it's me again. Um, I hope you've enjoyed what we've been uh, showing you so far and um, I think uh, particularly, you know, Nikki, Marley and James uh, were fantastic there talking about just the fact that we are uh, a normal community. We're a normal community of, of young people and teachers working together to achieve um, great ends. So um, the, the relationship, I, I touched on this earlier, the relationship between the students and the staff in the sixth floor is a really special one. Um, you move from being a pupil student to more partnership and a more partnership based approach uh, at A level. Um, we spend a lot of time, uh, five lessons a week, um, studying A level. So you spend a lot of time with uh, particular members of staff and also outside uh, of the um, academic environment with your tutors uh, and also with uh, your sports and, and um, co curricular activities. So you really develop a really close bond with those teachers and they are passionate about uh, delivering um, education uh, here at Victoria College. Um, there are many, um, too many to name, but we've, we've managed to um, speak to two of them um, who are going to tell you a little bit about what uh, working in the sixth form means to them, uh, how enthusiastic they are about it. Uh, and on the one hand, we've got uh, very much an academic teacher and the other hand, we've got uh, a member of staff who's going to talk about the enrichment and the pastoral experience and what it's like to really get to know these boys. So I'll hand you over to them. Thanks. Hello, I'm um, Mrs. Scritty. I'm the Head of Business and Trident Coordinator here at Vic. I'm Mr. Haben. Uh, I'm a PE teacher here. Um, I'm Second Department Head of Academic PE. So Lisa, um, can you talk to us a little bit about tutoring in the sixth form? Uh, yeah, so when you join the sixth form, if you've transitioned up from year 11, or if you're new into our community, you'll be allocated a tutor who will see you through both years 12 and 13. And it's incredibly important, the role of a tutor in the sixth form, because um, it's sort of your transitional time where you're thinking about your post school options, be that out into the workplace or up to university and your tutor is the one who gets to know you outside of the classroom what your strengths are what you find challenging what your interests are what your aspirations are what you're looking at wanting to do they're the ones that will put together your UCAS statements and help you with those applications to the workplace so it's really important that you develop a so solid and strong relationship with your tutor because uh, you know that will carry you through and give you those opportunities post school um, Sam, how would you say that in A level differs to GCSE in the structure of the school? Uh, well, it's a lot more independent. I think you're here and you've chosen solely subjects which which you're interested in. Um, so as a result, you've got to manage time um, by yourself the whole time, and um, you've got to make sure that your learning is is well, obviously facilitated by us, but also um, it's really student led. So it just makes it a really nice transition from sixth form to university or from year 11 to university. This is a really good stopgap for um, giving a taste of, of what that life is like. So when you're doing your GCSEs, obviously what we say is it's sort of 
uh, you do quite a narrow depth of um, study, but a very broad range of subjects. When it comes to A-levels, what you do is you pinpoint your favourite subjects, those that are going to be useful to you in your career or your further studies. And so you narrow down the range of subjects you're doing, but we massively increase the, the depth of them. So the jump up from GCSE to A-level, it is significant and it will require a lot of commitment from you, but you're not going to be stretched thin over 10, 11, 12 subjects. You'll be focusing on three or four subjects and then obviously having lots of enrichment around that, be that. Um, learning to teach English as a foreign language or getting a professional finance qualification, learning to cook, doing some fitness, leadership things, there's all sorts going on. But that academic rigour is really important that we stretch you and challenge you and enable you to access those opportunities either in the workplace in professional training contracts or over at university studying firstly as undergrads and hopefully beyond that to postgraduate studies. Um, and Sam, can you tell us a little bit about the Old Victorians Association as well? Um, yep, so I'm lucky enough to not only have, have gone to the school to also teach here now, so I've kind of um, got my foot in both balls, if you like, with um, currently still at school and also uh, part of the, the OVA Association. So within the OVA, it's, um, it's, a, it's a really tight knit of, of people that I'm still very good friends with now from my days at school. Um, and I sort of grew up with them and still spent a lot of time with them both um, through the OVA uh, um, foundation and also through sort of my own free time um, because they're still my friends. Um, now within the OVAs, I'd say it's, uh, it's a community that was actually really welcoming. Um, I obviously am heavily involved with still the sports side of it, being playing for the OVA uh, Hockey Association. However, I've still got a lot of friends that play both hockey and cricket. Um, they're still involved with, with shooting at times within the school. Um, so there's, a, there's a, a real broad range of different activities, sporting and non-sporting, that people can get involved with. The final thing I'm going to talk to you about tonight is our application form, which is going to take place online this year. And Ms. Rowland will show you where to find that shortly. Within that application, you're going to need to tell us why you want to join the sixth form, uh, which subjects you want to study and why, and also the skills and qualities you're going to bring to the sixth form. That application will be due just before the February half term. In the build-up to this deadline, we'll be providing guidance interviews for each of our year 11 students. Um, that'll be taking place in January and February with myself, Mrs. Joe and Ms. Varney. Uh, and we're more than happy to meet with students from other schools as well, should they wish to. So please do get in touch and we can arrange to discuss your options. We've already been supporting students at Victoria College this term, um, so we've been sending out a variety of details and information via their tutors um, using Microsoft Teams, uh, and that support will be ongoing and build up to Christmas and beyond. Uh, but again, if students want to come and have a chat with us during the school day, they can get in touch with me and I'll happily meet with them to discuss things further. After the application process has uh, been completed, once the deadline's passed, we will then be inviting students for interviews with myself and the headmaster, after which we'll make offers to students for their place in sick form, uh, subject to their GCSE results uh, later in August. Our minimum criteria is a 4.8 grade average at GCSE, though we recommend a 5.5 average uh, for a three A-level programme. That 4.8 average must include a four in both English, whether that's language or literature, uh, and also mathematics. There are some subject specific criteria, so for example, if you want to go and study maths at A-level, you require a seven at GCSE. It's important to remember that subjects are also available through our consortium agreement with JCG and Folia. So some examples are Spanish, media and classical civilization at JCG, uh, music tech, business speed tech and IT at Folia. And you can indicate your interest in those using our application form. Uh, there's also an, uh, an opportunity when filling out the form to indicate uh, that you'd like some more information about our bursary support opportunities. I'll now hand over to Ms. Rowland, our Head of Marketing, uh, who's going to show you where you can find important information on our school website, including the application form, the prospectus, subject guide and subject videos. If you have any questions following this presentation, please do get in touch. My email address is a.full, that's F-A-L-L-E, at bcj.sch.je, and I'll be more than happy to help you in making your choices for the form. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, my name is Claire Rowland, um, and I am the Head of Marketing, Communications and Foundation here at college. One of our main objectives in the marketing team is to make sure that our website is as user friendly as possible. So I'm just going to give you a short tour of our dedicated sick form pages so you can reach all the information you need, either as a parent or as a student. 
So once you land on our website, um, we have the sick form tab there on the third, just here. And this is the sick form homepage where you can find information about the sick form prospectus, sick form option guide, sick form application form, and also the sick form opportunities guide. As a parent, you may want some extra information about our admissions process, uh, our fees and financial support that is available. Um, and this information is all available on our for parents tab. There's also a link on here for show my homework and also absence form. So show my homework is there, absence request is there. And as you go further down, you have the application form there as well with all the information that Mr. Fall just covered. Um, moving on, our heads of department have put together um, A-level overview videos for you and your sons to watch to gain more information about their, what their subject offer and what you can expect with relation um, to the syllabus and exam requirements and also the potential career paths. So to access this information, just go to learning and scroll down to the grid in the middle of the page. And here you'll find all the subject overviews under the subject heading and then a video um, link to watch there. Um, under our careers tab, we have some detailed information where our former pupils, um, uh, sorry, some detailed information about where our former pupils went on to study after sick form. Um, there are also links to our careers team and local apprenticeship providers. So I'll show you that. Beyond College. Is the, here is the information about higher education and an example timeline for sixth formers. And then we also have the careers tab here, which has the information on the careers team and local apprenticeship providers alongside other important career information like UniFrog links and um, information for parents. Um, following on from this, under school life, so one of the final tabs here, uh, sorry, school life, there we go. Um, and beyond the classroom, you'll find information about our house system, our prefects, awards, sport, and CCF, music, clubs, and the bistro. So there's plenty of information to have a read um, on our website. But if you do, as Mr. Fall mentioned before, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, our alumni are also incredibly supportive of the current um, of our current students and work with us on a number of career mentoring programs, not to mention our interview and CV skills as well. Um, so if you want any more information on our old Victorians Association, there's a link just on the end under alumni, but this will be for further down the road once you've finished your studies. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I think our presentation stops there. I will um, give you contact details for everybody now. So if you do need to contact us, please let us know. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Just to finish up, because um, it's, it's important that we, we close out well, um, I'd just like to say an enormous thank you to, uh, to everybody uh, for, uh, for dialing in this evening. Um, over the last hour, I hope that you've, um, you've learned a lot, uh, you've taken on board a lot of the information and hopefully been uh, a little inspired uh, to, uh, to apply for our uh, sixth form. Uh, there were a few little minor uh, technical hiccups earlier on in the session, but we got there. So thanks for, uh, very much for, for sticking with us. Um, I'd just like to say, remember, that um, a sixth form place at Victoria College really represents the pinnacle of our school's education system. Um, our community is vibrant, passionate, and if you are to come here um, as a student, you will be given the very, very best of opportunities uh, to uh, develop as a person and to really set yourself up uh, to make your mark in the world. Um, Ms. Rowland mentioned just now very briefly that our old, old Victorian community is incredibly strong, both on island and off island, and uh, we really rely on them to provide us support. But you also, once you leave the sixth form, will become part of that community. And the fond association that all of our pupils have with the college really, really does last a lifetime. We really hope that you uh, choose to apply to what uh, is going to be a whole world of opportunity um, going forward in the next two years. Um, I'd like to say once, one last time, a huge thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I hope it's been uh, an, of interest and uh, use to you. Uh, please do get in touch with us if you've got any further questions. We will make sure we post out a link with the recording of this whole presentation uh, in due course. But for now, uh, I really hope that you all stay safe and well in these challenging times um, and uh, have a really nice and safe evening. Thanks very much and good night.